from LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. It's a big afternoon of Afternoons LA Late with incredible news about your fourth stimulus check update of 2021 and that fourth stimulus package and that recon at issue. And this recording, you're going to hear the breaking news about the statements that came in from Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders today. The House had passed that incredible recon out of the House Senate to the Senate, and the Senate had vowed to pass it and make it law this coming week. Then it was not going to go to vote even this week as of Thursday. And then over the weekend, namely this morning, Joe Manchin came out with a series of comments and quotes that may have thought that the recon would be not doing well. But the Senate changes are coming. Joe Manchin made a clear error in his broadcast this morning. And that clear error is that the recon is going to go to the finish line with a lot of checks, about $15,000. This is after you can get third stimulus right today. And in this recording, I'm going to go over how you get those huge sums of checks. This is your Christmas stimulus. On average, $5,000 across the board. I'll be going over the latest details about that. Student loan de debt forgiveness, the latest breaking details about that. But in this slightly different special report on Afternoon to LA today, in which we're also going to talk about that cola raise, I'm going to go over what you need to know about that recon. Number one, Joe Manchin made a critical error today by vocalizing his position to the press, emphatically for the first time ever, where he is on the recon. Now, setting up in place the call for the vote for the recon, at which Joe Manchin will have to publicly, in the public record of the Congressional Caucus, raise his hand and vote yes or no, and this is exactly what we wanted. This is exactly what I told you all last week, the week before, and over the last month, Representatives Hirono and Durbin were among those who said, call the vote, now it will be called. And we will see where everything lies. It's breaking news as a special report with a lot of analysis you've never seen before, and it's all happening right now in this show you do not want to miss. It's Eve Afternoons, Alight. Hey, good afternoon, noon, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Then recon passed the House of Representatives a few weeks ago, landed in the Senate, and was supposed to be called for a vote and become a law by Christmas. Then it was rolled over to January. But minutes ago, Chuck Schumer had a real surprise awakening when a press call came in that Joe Manchin was appearing on Fox News and talking about the recon. What did he say, and what did Bernie Sanders say in reaction to the news? The programs in this incredible recon will pay you about $15,000, and you don't have to wait for them because third stimulus is still paying out. Average $5,000 is your Christmas stimulus. I'm going to go over how to get the sums of money. Then we'll be turning to student loan debt forgiveness and fifth stimulus. But this is a slightly different recording, as you can already tell. In this recording, I'm going to go over everything from day one to the present of what we have done and changed before Joe Manchin. And why today's statement from Joe Manchin may have been a rallying cry of support among Republicans. It's a big, great day for the Purple Power Caucus. And I'll explain to you why. The incredible details coming up in this recording. But first, I want you to go into this video and subscribe. Subscribe to the number one most watched financial news channel in America on the subject matter, geopolitical news. You don't want to miss a single video across the board. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes, and consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. Join me next on Evening's LA at 5 o'clock. It's a very fluid situation. I told you over the last two weeks. You could not miss a single day or a single video because the situation was so fluid. And if you did, it would take a lot of time to get caught up. I undervalued the situation when I said that. When I said that it would take a little bit of time to get caught up, boy, it's going to take you months to get caught up if you have missed anything in the last two days on this channel. Let's go over all the incredible details starting right now. It was over a month ago, well, about two weeks ago, in which Chuck Schumer issued a statement, written a statement, to his Democrat caucus, said that the recon will be called for a vote on 
by no later than Christmas in the Senate. He also, in a series of other quotes, said that the recon will pass and become a law by Christmas. He was referring to this coming Friday, Christmas Eve, that's the 24th. At the time Chuck Schumer said that, press went over to Joe Manchin and said, what do you think about that? He says, I've seen a lot of timelines. I don't determine when things are called for a vote. That's exactly true. He, the only one guy that determines when things are called for a vote, and his name is Chuck Schumer. And the other one, of course, is Nancy Pelosi. But Joe Manchin was correct because Chuck Schumer had originally said this was going to go, go for a final vote in July and then August and then Memorial Day weekend. So the calls that was going for a final vote on the 24th was, you know, just another date. Now, what happened on Wednesday? What happened on Thursday? And what happened minutes ago? Wednesday, Chuck Schumer sent a message over to the White House saying, you know what? I need to know, are we calling the vote this coming Monday? Because that's what I had put in writing, that the voting on the recon would start the Monday, the week of Christmas, and we get done. The Senate only needs three days to vote, and it's a five-day week, and if you want to make it a law and send it back to the House for one day, we still have enough days. That's four days in a five-day week. Mr. President, hello? I can't hear you. Chuck Schumer was a little bit uneased, according to certain reports, that the President wasn't telling him, am I calling the vote on this coming Monday, or am I not? Why was Chuck Schumer at ease, uneased? Because the president was having meetings with Joe Manchin, and they were not going well, as I reported all that week and that day. They were not going well. In fact, they were no better where they were. In fact, they may have been going backwards. Elizabeth Warren, who is sometimes the no-nonsense, shoot for the hip, tell it like it is legislator, said Joe Manchin was going into these meetings with Joe Biden and saying that he did not agree to certain provisions, which he had already agreed to months earlier. Interesting. So, we had awaited that uh, that update from the president on Wednesday, Chuck Schumer as well, and then Thursday, out of nowhere, late in the day, a statement came out from the White House that, oh, let me back up, Wednesday night, the president was asked by press, is the recon going to vote this coming week and is it going to become law? He said, I believe so. President, the president, 24 hours later, 24 hours after seeing Joe Manchin, 24 hours later between Wednesday and Thursday, the president issues a statement in which he name checks Joe Manchin three times in the statement. It's not a particularly long statement, but yet Joe Manchin's name appears three times. The president says, we need a couple more weeks on this. A couple more weeks? On Wednesday, you said we were ready to rock and roll. The next 24 hours later, you said we need a couple more weeks. Why? He doesn't explain why. And I explained to you the why at the time when I saw all the details. The why was that the president had a problem with Joe Manchin on a series of Wednesday negotiations. Now, that was then. And on Thursday and Friday and Saturday on this channel, I went back to those quotes no less than a month ago. When Lita Schumer listed that issue, that statement, that letter saying, we're going to call the vote in December. Democratic senators applauded it. Why? Because they said you have to finally call the vote. M Maisie Hirono, Democrat Hawaii senator, and Dick Durbin, a Democratic senator, Illinois, said you have to just call the vote because ultimately people can guess what a Joe Manchin is going to vote for or vote against. And he may be just trying to stall the situation, just call the vote and see if, if he is all bluff and, and, or real say as, as issue. That was then. I said, you really want the vote to be called because ultimately that will get the ball rolling. And then Bernie Sanders said much the same. So going into the weekend, what the recordings were Friday and Saturday, that one, the recon was not going to become a law by Christmas, but two, that the voting would happen in January. Number three, that the voting would really push the envelope to get it done. So out of reportedly nowhere, today's events unfolded. Let me step back so you understand the magnitude of today's events. Number one, Joe Manchin has been asked repeatedly by the White House and by press on the record, are you going to vote against or in favor of the recon? He's been asked that question since April all the way up to the present, up to yesterday. And his answer was, I have no answer for it. I'm not going to give you a yes or no. It was a non-responsive answer. Now, he's published articles, Joe Manchin, where he says, I want to pause. When asked, what do you mean by a pause? He says, well, I want to reassess the situation. I'm not saying yes or no. He said, I just don't want to address the situation. So there were really basically two answers he was giving. One, I don't want to answer the question. Or two, uh, let's just sort of think about it, and then we'll answer the question. Both, of her, both an invasive answer across the board. Now, let's go through, however, what Joe Manchin has told 
people about the recon in, in specifics, provisions, and all those elements since the month of April. Number one, he had told the White House when in April the recon was combined with the roads and bridges. If you separate them out, he will get his vote for the recon. The promise from Joe Manchin's mouth was take the roads and bridges out of the out of the recon and separate it out, make it a separate body of legislation, you will get his vote in favor of the recon. And then, when talking about the corporate tax rate that pays for the recon in April, Joe Manchin says, if you raise it up from where it is now, which Joe Manchin said was actually too low under the Trump administration, raise it up from where it is now to like 25%, you got my vote. But if you do it, you're 28%, you don't have my vote. Okay, that was also clear. Joe Manchin said, if you take clean energy out of the third cluster, you have my vote. Also really clear. And he also said, if you leave paid leave in there, you do not have my vote. Also clear. Uh, a series of things are very, very clear across the board. He also said, I had problems with the Medicaid gap fix, which was basically a series of 12 Republican states were not paying for Medicare, Obamacare. And Joe Manchin had a very great argument. I thought it was, I applauded it. He said the way it's set up right now is poor uh, Democratic states are paying the bill for rich Republican states that foul never to pay for Obamacare. So he said, you need to fix it. And the president was not fixing it. The president's fault or Brian DC's fault. It was not fixed. And that was a discussion over a dinner in Delaware at the president's mansion. Then came Raphael Warnock, the senator from, uh, from, from Atlanta, saying, okay, I got this fixed for you. He fixed it. So what you see over the last few months is a series of places where Joe Manchin says, I support it, I support it, support it. In fact, no less than 30 days ago, he says, I'm a supporter of the recall. And when he doesn't like a provision, he says, I don't support, I don't support the, re the provision. Pretty simple. So it's very easy for me to record on this channel that the recon is going to pass, that the recon will get modified, and that the recon vote should go. And then came Sunday morning. Sunday morning, Joe Manchin appeared on broadcast media. And he appeared on broadcast media to announce the first time since any date in the year 2021 that he would vote against the recon, the force of recon. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> Now, let's step this back a step. First of all, this is inconsistent with what he said before. Number two, it's just inconsistent with all the programs he's talked about. It's just inconsistent with what he's written. It's just inconsistent with what he's said. It's just inconsistent with everything he said. But let's make it very clear. He said, I am voting against the recall if it's called for a vote. Okay, that's the first thing. Number two, where and how did he make this announcement? This is the bigger thing. He reportedly told no one in the White House that he was making the announcement, or anyone in any administration that he was making the announcement. Finally, where did he make the announcement? On Fox News. Yes, on Fox News. Now, when the president announced that statement on Thursday, that he needs a couple more weeks, and name-checked Joe Manchin, that may have been the nail in the coffin for Joe Manchin, because Joe Manchin came back in a quote, which or a statement, which I read at the time, which I said I was shocked that Joe Manchin spoke this way about the leader of his Democrat caucus and the president of the United States, that he said, well, that's his interpretation of my words, not my words. Ooh, ooh. Sounds sort of ripe for a real housewives reunion, not for a congressional caucus. So, Joe Manchin appeared on broadcast media this morning on Fox News, and what did he say? He said uh, if he was going to be asked to vote on the recon, he would vote no. Very, very clear. Very, very clear. If I can't go home and explain to the people of West Virginia, I can't vote for it. And if I can't vote to continue with this piece of legislation, I can't. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. There is a no on this piece of legislation. I've tried everything I have to do. Wow. Uh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> he hasn't tried everything he can do. But uh, at least it was clear. Now, this is great news for you folks. This is really good news for you. I'm going to get to the great news in a second. As you see, this is a very different recording. This is a breaking exclusive uh, special report today. And you can only understand the magnitude of this special report if you have been a viewer of this channel since day one. Because there's a lot of major twists and turns in here that you have to, as a broadcaster, as a news reporter, remember what this man has said, what he hasn't said, and line it up and understand the history of the situation. Well, that was on Fox News. CNN booked Bernie Sanders to respond to it, thankfully so, because you wanted to hear Bernie Sanders. Now, let me go with Bernie Sanders. You heard me talk about him since Thursday, since Wednesday. No quotes from Bernie Sanders on Wednesday. No quotes from Bernie Sanders on Thursday. The president issued that statement on Thursday. No quotes from Bernie Sanders. There was nothing anywhere from Bernie Sanders on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
thank goodness, bless their souls, CNN booked Bernie Sanders for a quote because we have not heard from Bernie Sanders ever since we knew that the recon was not going for vote by Christmas. So what did Bernie Sanders say? He said, I hope that we, senators, will bring a strong, this strong bill to the floor of the Senate as soon as we can. And we will let Mr. Manchin explain to the people of West Virginia why he doesn't have the guts to stand up to the powerful special interest. If he doesn't have the courage to do the right thing for the working families of West Virginia, America, let him vote in front, no in front of the American people and the world. End quote. Why is this great news for you? You know what the answer is. It's great news for you because you finally have the reckoning that we needed. You finally have the reason to call the vote. Back on Wednesday, I started the hashtag campaign, hashtag Chuck call the vote. Hashtag Chuck call the vote was when Chuck was waiting for guidance for the president. I said, stop waiting for guidance for the president. If you're, if you're worried about something, just call the vote, Chuck. Call the vote. Then when the president said, we're not going to do this to January, and we didn't know why, I said, hashtag Chuck call the vote. Now you really understand why it's hashtag Chuck call the vote. It's ever more than ever. Hashtag Chuck call the vote. Hashtag Chuck call the vote. Five words all together. Four words. <laughs> hashtag Chuck call the vote. Because this is how 100% of viewers of this channel in a special report on Thursday, live on air on afternoons and evenings, when polled, answered. When I asked you back in May, when they had a problem with the recon, that Joe Manchin said, I'm not going to support the recon because it has the roads and bridges in there. Take the recon, take the roads and bridges out. Make it into two different bodies of bills, two, two different bodies of uh, legislation. I said, would you have done that? Or would you just call the vote and see if he would vote it against it? 100% of the viewers said in May, they would have called the vote. I agree. I would have called the vote. It was a trick. It was a trick by Joe Manchin. A very clever trick. He wanted his roads and bridges. He wanted that really badly. And he tricked them to take it out, to streamline it in its easy passage by bipartisanship because it could pass. Take out the part of the legislation you like, streamline it as a separate body of legislation, and then go on our way. He met with Pramila Jalapal during the month of July. He said he was in favor of the recon. He sugarcoated it. He wasn't. Apparently, he was not. So he was. He tricked Pramila Jalapal. Then he had the moderate Democrats in the House trick Nancy Pelosi to have her call the vote on the roads and bridges before the recon so that the roads and bridges became law and not the recon. Now, let's go back to why this is great news for you. This is great news for you because this is exactly what Democratic senators have been asking for for months. Call the vote, have Joe Manchin raise his hand and say no, and then deal with it. There's a lot of ways to deal with it. Number one, <laughs> number one, you have him raise his hand and then you go right after him and say, what is wrong in the legislation? I just have to think about it. No, you don't. You just voted no. You've, you've already think about it. Well, you know, I, I, have to go to, I have to go to dinner. I'll be back in a few hours. No, you have to answer the question. You just voted no. You can't run from the subject matter once you vote. Now, in the universe of news reporting, there's lots of ways to get stories out there and lots of ways to bury stories. And one of the ways to bury a story is to issue a press release on a Friday at 5 p.m. Yeah, that's obviously one way. Another way is, uh, to, is to say something right before a big weekend, holiday weekend, so no one hears it. Well, guess what? <laughs> on a Sunday, on Fox News, before, as people have already started to travel back for the holiday, Joe Manchin, after avoiding the subject matter for uh, the question for now like eight months, slides into Fox News and says, you know, no, thank you, no. Pretty cowardly? Yeah, of course it's cowardly. Of course it's cowardly. So let's go over what you need to know about where, why this is good. This is good because the Maisie Hirono, the Dick Durbin, the, uh, the Bernie Sanders quotes that we have talked about since uh, a month ago were call the vote. For two reasons, it's, well, for many reasons, it's very good. Because number one, now, there's no reason not to call the vote. There's no reason not to call the vote. 
there is a topic to, to, uh, covered on this channel on Friday and Saturday where I said it, uh, somewhere in the universe, Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer went to the University of, of Legislation one, and took a 101, which teaches them never call a vote on something that's going to fail. I disagree. And so do the Senate Democrats. This is going to cause a rift with Chuck Schumer because Chuck Schumer's fellow Democratic senators say, call the vote on the recon and let Joe Manchin vote against it because that will move it along and then we'll have the ability to modify it so that he likes it. Maisie Hirono, Dick Durbin, Bernie Sanders, all these people have said this quote over and over again for months. Now, you know Nancy Pelosi, what she does. She won't call the vote on anything unless it's going to pass. Chuck Schumer, he's, uh, he's uh, schemish about this. He, he is, um, he, he's avoiding the subject matter. You saw the, you saw the tweets from Pramila Jalapal over the weekend. Why did the senators leave town? Why did the senators leave town a week before Christmas? Not the week of Christmas, the week before Christmas. To avoid, avoid calling the vote. She said, call the vote. <laughs> she said, call, Chuck, hashtag Chuck, call the vote. She said, hashtag Chuck, Chuck call the vote because you know what? Call the vote, there's nothing wrong. It goes down, it fails, then you modify it. And what viewers and myself universally agreed on the special reports on Thursday was that had they started calling the vote on this in July, Chuck Schumer had in his back pocket no less than three or four extra recons available. So you call the vote in July, it fails, before, instead of splitting it up with the roads and bridges, and it fails. Then you fix it, and you fix it, and then you recall it as a new recon. You recall it, or whatever it is, and you recall the vote, and you get it done. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. So, is this good news for us? Yes. Why? Because on Thursday, we really had a blockade wall with Chuck Schumer and the president not want to call the vote. I, de I portrayed the president in a very clear image on this channel on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which was a guy who doesn't want to call the vote because if it fails, he thinks it's bad with his poll rating. No. What's bad with your poll ratings is that you're not getting the recon done. So the fact it's not done, no one cares that the vote is down or the vote is up. What anyone who is sophisticated, educated, and a, a supporter of the president will do is they're going to read what's going on. And they're going to update themselves about the situation. They're going to know the president thinks that the recon may not pass because of Joe Manchin. So he will just say, we're going to take a look at this in a few days, then a few weeks, then a few months, then, and then a month. Then we'll take a look at it in, in, you know, in 2099. Now, if you're a smart supporter of the president, you're going to know, no, you're, you're just delaying the issue. The st smart strategist of any during the caucus would call the vote, let it fail, and try it again. And that is where the error had happened until today. When Bernie Sanders appears on CNN and says, now is more reason than ever to call the vote, that is where it's signaling the point. One thing that was missing today, or at least at the time of this recording, no statement by Chuck Schumer. No statement by Nancy Pelosi, no statement by the White House, although the White House was sort of blindsided by the Joe Manchin appearance on Fox News. But no statement by Chuck Schumer, who has avoided the issue of the defense spending bill. So I try to justify Chuck Schumer's uh, situation going on camera because he's a great guy and try to figure out, okay, why is Chuck not talking about what day for the recon vote? Why is he not talking about before the Joe Manchin quote on Fox News? Why is he not talking about after it? Chuck Schumer had a marathon Saturday, if you did not know. Chuck Schumer, since January 1, has had to get dozens, if not hundreds, of federal court justices, appeals court justices, and U.S. ambassadors uh, confirmed by the Senate and have been blocked by Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz. And so we've had literally no ambassadors anywhere, folks. And he literally had everyone in session on Senate in that subcommittee, uh, confirmation subcommittee, for I think it was 40 hours on Saturday night to get it done. So there was some very confusing window that opened that allowed him to do this after trying to do it for nearly 12 months. So that was clearly an opportunity he had to grab at the moment. And it is very important. You have to have all our ambassadors in position. So that got, got in there and got done. It took a day out of his schedule, but he had to do it. Um, 
Now you really want the pressure to be on Chuck Schumer to call the vote on the recon. More than ever to call the vote on the recon, because now you got what you need. What do we get that we needed? We needed Joe Manchin to simply come out and say, no. This, I don't know, I'm not going to answer your question, pause, check back with me. That wasn't helping us. That was not helping us. Because guess what? It, it, it could be manipulated, not to say a negative thing, but be manipulated by the White House to say, uh, we're, we're almost there. We're, you know, we're still talking with Joe, by Joe Manchin. We're almost there, and he just needs a little more time. We need a little more time. No. When Joe Manchin says no, that really helps us. Because now it says, okay, we got a definitive no on this body of legislation. So... You're obviously wondering, what's next? How do you go from a no to a yes? How do you go from a no to a yes on the Build Back Act? Many different ways. Number one, call the vote on it as it's written. Get everyone to raise their hands and get a no from Joe Manchin. Then see what Joe Manchin doesn't like in there. And then... Uh, while the congressional record is going on and they're arguing on the Senate floor and it's appearing on C-SPAN and everyone's watching it, then you have, and you say to Joe Manchin, well, you don't like provision one, two, and three, we remove it, then how about that? Well, <laughs> imagine if he says, well, I don't know, I have to go to lunch. I have to go to dinner, I'll be back. That's not going to read good for any electorate. No one's going to like the guy if he just says, I'm not going to answer anyone's question. I'm just focused on having my donuts for lunch or whatever he eats or coal. Uh, so by putting him on the congressional floor, on the Senate floor, C-SPAN rolling, him raising his hand, saying no, then people saying, okay, what do you want to take out? This is what we call the, the, the debate. Remember Nancy how he says... <laughs> It's just five weeks of debate. Yeah, we're going to be debating this for five weeks. And the, the, the debate appears on broadcast media. We, you know, we've covered this since day one. People are always sending me messages. Did you hear what, what, uh, what uh, Ron Johnson said on the floor? Did you see what uh, Pat Toomey said? He said Joe Biden's not this. And the, <laughs> they just said crazy things. Um, that people pick up that crazy stuff. So putting the guy on the spot, yeah, that's what this is called. Putting Joe Manchin on the spot works. Now, then when he says, I don't like something, you modify it. Votorama, <laughs> you know why I'm laughing with the Votorama. Because I always would say on this channel, Votorama, you could uh, enhance things or add things, but you don't have to remove anything. <laughs> nah, you sort of do. <laughs> so something Joe Manchin doesn't like in there, then remove it. Then remove it during the Votorama. I mean, th there's a lot of ways to fix this, folks. When you start the vote, when you start the vote, there's a lot of ways to fix it. Now, let's say we go through the whole voting process. We do the Votorama. We remove things. And perhaps we, we aren't right there yet. It's still not working. You got another opportunity. Guess what the other opportunity is? The Build Back America Act Part 2 or 2.0 or the sequel or the second version, whatever you want to call it, the second version. They determine what's wrong and what's wrong needs to go back and be redone in the House. <laughs> Add in some stimulus checks because that was very wrong. And then send it back over to the Senate. Now, that is the, the, the one of many different ways that I can quickly on the top of my head explain to you of how they can get this done. But this is great, a great uh, door for us to move forward with Joe Manchin saying no. All right. In the second half of this video, I'm going to be coming back on air and I will be explaining to you why grasping today's news will be hard for some people because of what is out there. And then we'll be going over to third stimulus and also student loan debt forgiveness. It's a big, unusual video and a lot happening. But stay with me in the second half of this video. I'm going to explain to you how they can get this done, how quickly they can get it done. And when would that money start landing? Those details coming up in the special ha second half of the special report. It's Afternoons Allied. See you back in 60 seconds, especially with the big money from third stimulus heating up as well. We'll be back in 60 seconds as Afternoons Allied continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. 
That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now. As Afternoons LA goes in the second half, those programs in Incredible Recon will pay you at least $15,000, but now they can pay you a lot more. Why more? In the second half, I'll explain to you as well. Those Senate changes, when would they go in there? I'll have all those details coming up in the second half. But we'll be turning also to third symbols. That's going to pay you a lot of money. Viewers are saying in the live chats this morning, thank goodness for Ally, because he's been around to show us how to get money despite the wranglings of four stimulus. This is third symbols, and it has cash for you right now. Student loan debt forgiveness, the latest details on that. You've been asking some great questions about that cola raise and that snap and those details across the board. It's coming up in the second half of this video. Stay with me. But with that, I want you to be part of this incredible family where you're going to see breaking news on the hour, by the hour, and you're going to see a brand new look to this channel coming in just a short period of time. And with that, subscribe. 400,000 subscribers to YouTube record. I want you part of this incredible family. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video, 2-3 thousand likes, and consider becoming a member of the number one most watched geopolitical news channel in America, LA Light. Get that incredible newsletter that goes out Monday through Friday that features the big money available under third stimulus so you can get those monies. I also sign up for these LA alerts, which are totally free. The link is under the description across the board. Coming up later today is the excitement of Evenings LA, and boy, is a big show. And if you've not missed it, if you've not caught it, our evening schedule tonight is beefed up. We now have Evenings LA at 5 o'clock, Evenings Countdown at 6 o'clock. We have Holiday Stream Stimulus at 7, and now the new hit show, Out of Nowhere, the sleeper hit of the fall season has been Evenings Extra at 8 p.m. nightly opposite Calcino. And with that, let's go into this incredible recon right now with the second half across the board. Well, that recon really gets very fascinating now. Why? Because suddenly you're going to have to see that Watching the news on Allied is going to be very different than watching the news somewhere else. Why? When the news came out about Joe Manchin this morning, I had to take a break and just sort of think about it. You know why? Because there's three different ways, at least, to report the statements from Joe Manchin this morning on broadcast media. The first way, if you're a Republican GOP site, you would report it by saying the Force Stimulus Recon is dead. You would wave a flag, celebrate, and do a little dance in a corner. Because that is one angle to do it. Now, obviously, when I told you earlier in this recording when Joe Manchin appeared on Fox News, I thought, oh. Fox News has over and over and over again said that the recon would fail if Joe Manchin does not support it. And he said no. So they had the quote and the video and the rights to the video with Joe Manchin now saying, no, I'm not supporting it. So they can now wave a flag and do a dance in a quarter saying the recon's not going to pass. Now, I don't usually talk about other channels. You know me very well. But I need to tell you this. There's at least two YouTube channels where the hosts absolutely despise Democrats. They just despise Democrats. They won't say it on air, but they do. They hate Democrats. And so everything they will ever record is anti-Democrats. So when 
you're not watching their videos. <laughs> Those I phrase that sentence. When you're not watching their videos, they're going to say the recon is dead. The recon is dead because if you didn't watch the Fox News interview, Joe Manchin says it's dead. That's the recording they want to make because they love telling you Democrat policies fail. That's what they pride to do. They don't want to say it on air, but that's what they inherently like to do. They are very staunch, staunch, uh, staunch GOP supporters. All right. The other side of the spectrum would be to say, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm a, uh, 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 I'm a realist, and I just don't understand how it's going to go from A to B. So, uh, so you know, maybe I'll just avoid the subject matter. Another version would be the donut guy, <laughs> who doesn't really have his own channel uh, or have his own broadcast new media outlet. But the donut guy, who may have heard that Chuck Schumer was going to pass and become law by Christmas, is going to show up on Christmas Eve saying, hi, where's my donut? Uh, we have eggnog for you, sir. <laughs> We have the senatorial eggnog, but we do not have donuts because you've apparently missed everything that's happened the last three days. There's a lot that you've missed. As Ally told you, do not miss a single video. Why do I have to watch videos? I just want to show up when my donut shows up. Well, so that person's going to be very, very confused. You, however, understand that specifics, details, strategy, um, maneuvering, and positivity is part of the focus of the channel. And when I heard the Joe Manchin comments, I had to think about it for a second. I couldn't even press record initially. I thought, wait a second, let me think about this. And then I said, I want to see where Bernie's quote is. So I went looking for Bernie's quote because I, I found Joe's quote before I saw Bernie's quote because it was Bernie's quote was not as covered. I want to see what Bernie's quote was. And I'm like, oh, thank you. That's exactly what I would said, Bernie. Thank you. He's Bernie saying, call the vote. This is more reason than ever to call the vote because it's different to appear on broadcast media than call the vote. Let me go over Bernie's quote. Bernie's quote is very important. Joe Manchin did this thing, I think in September, where he published an op-ed, op which is an op-ed is sort of like, you know, uh, a coffee table read. <laughs> An op-ed is just what you said at the water cooler. I said something at the water cooler yesterday. So he published something in the op-ed a few months ago saying, I want to pause on the situation. How vague is that? <laughs> it's not, you know, on TV. It's not, you know, in the congressional record raising your head. It's a sort of an opinion piece buried in a newspaper. And they kept on record, report, uh, referring to it. Cowardly. Coward. It's cowardly. Get your hand up and vote yes or no on the Senate floor on C-SPAN Live so we can all see it. And when Bernie Sanders, you know he's going to do this, is going to be in the corner arguing, you know, normally arguing with Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, he's now going to be arguing with his fellow uh, caucus member, because Bernie's an independent, and saying there's something wrong with you, Joe Manchin. It's going to go viral. It's going to go viral. Let the moment happen. And this is why it's very exciting news for you. Now, why is it important to watch this channel and nowhere else? Because it is very easy when reporting uh, geopolitical news, politics, to just run with a narrative that fits what you want to talk about and angle it for a certain sort of viewer. Uh, Fox News, oh, <laughs> the, the recon's dead. Uh, Trump 2024, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of easy. Um, uh, you know, confusing channels. Um, don't really know what's going on. Let's talk about nail polish. <clears throat> don't know what's going on. How about a nice potpourri? <laughs> And then us. Let's go over the details. Let's go over the analysis. Let's go over the facts and, and, and everything across the board. What is going to happen next? What's going to happen next is you're going to have the White House coming out and talking about this. The press secretary. She's going to... <laughs> I wish I was in the room when she talks about this. She's going to go in, she's going to go in, in deep on Joe Manchin with this one. You know, there's a lot to be said about the way in which he made his announcement Sunday. We don't know if he actually said these words to the president. She will tell us what he Joe Manchin said to Joe Biden on Wednesday. 
he may have said to, 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 Joe, uh, to Joe Biden, I need a few days of the holidays to think about it. Um, you know, maybe we move some provisions out, take this, then remove it. Maybe they were, you know, they were in a working progress and they were getting closer to the end or or maybe they were, they were, you know, doing good faith negotiations. Joe Manchin's quote on Fox is basically, I stopped doing this a few weeks ago. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we saw you in the White House on Wednesday working on this. So when did it become a no, Joe, Joe Manchin? There's a lot that is unanswered in his quote, and I think any good Democrat who wants the recon to pass, like an Elizabeth Warren or a press or head of the press corps, is going to say, wait a second, he agreed to everything except paid leave. He agreed to everything except that provision. When did it become a complete no to the entire recon? Now, it's very interesting because he is uh, – Fox did do some good questioning of him during the interview and said to him something, some things like, well, don't you like the child tax credit, which will now expire if you don't vote in favor of the recon? If you've been with this channel for a while, um, very – uninformed broadcast media or lazy broadcast media channels, um, they'll just go with something they understand. It was in 2020, it was the unemployment benefits. Oh, the unemployment benefits are expiring. They're expiring. So what do you think about this? In this case, the CTC. Everyone understands the child tax credit. It's expiring. Joe Manchin, you're allowing the CTC to expire. People, millions of Americans won't get that $300 a month approximately for their children. What do you think about that? It was a good question. Great question. He said, I'm in favor of it, but I don't like the way it's written. Now, here I got to agree with Joe Manchin. Here I got to agree with Joe Manchin. Uh, there is a reoccurring theme coming out of this White House, and I think it's Brian D.C., where they write things the wrong way, and you think they didn't write the wrong way on accident. They wrote the wrong way on purpose. And Manchin is saying that while you hear me on camera saying that the child tax credit is one more year, the the earning income tax credit for hazard pay one more year, Manchin saying, no, the way it's written in here, it looks like it's indefinitely running for the next 20, 30 years. Now, I've been talking about this problem of language with that Joe Manchin has raised on this channel for two months. And apparently the problem is still there. So someone in this White House is pig-headed. This is where I'm blind blaming the White House and potentially Joe, uh, um, Brian D.C. If there are provisions in there that are still written to make it look like a one-year provision is a 20-year provision, that is game playing. And that is game playing with American people's livelihood. And we have heard these problems of the language drafting for months. And so someone in this White House is pig-headed. I mean, you and I can write it down on a piece of paper. One year. <laughs> One year, period. I mean, what's so difficult about this? Why is it suddenly written the way that it runs 20 years and then other people say, no, it's sort of one year. It's like, no, it, it, it can run for 20 years a year, the right way you've written it, or 30 years, or indefinitely, as she says it. Let's turn to third stimulus. Third stimulus, very um, good. You're going to see it back on this channel. The reason why I had to make today's recordings this way is because I need you to get caught up. I need you to get caught up on all this so that we can refocus in. And again, the person who didn't watch the morning, the weekend videos, I can't, I can't help that person. Um, hopefully, they'll see them on, on Encore. But uh, if, they, if you miss the weekend videos, you're like, what I miss? You miss everything. Go watch his videos from last weekend. He's not going to repeat it. I'm not going to repeat what happened with Joe Manchin come Monday. I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to focus on what's going on with January, what's going on with third stimulus. I'm going to go over third stimulus just for a blink of an eye, starting right now. Third stimulus is available out the door, and this is your rent, utilities, mortgages, food, and more. Third stimulus is still available on the average view of this channel has gotten five thousand dollars the last two weeks you should get it as well how do you get this money you're going to get this money for rent utilities mortgage this is more of this is your holiday stimulus you have a whole week next week where offices are open you can make the phone calls and get that money within 24 hours the average view of this channel has gotten five thousand dollars the last two weeks and there's two other ways to get additional sums first if you got one round last in the last two weeks for a few months, get another round for a different set of months. Number two, when I turn to the utility section, get 
all your utilities. Because I see the success stories. A lot of people got two of four utilities. And also, if you've had success stories as well, send them to me on private message as this channel is going to update the success stories and deliver them on air this coming week. So let's look at that rent. Wow. It, it was $20,000. Now it is upwards of $40,000. And this is a graphic of three months ago. Where are you getting that rent from? Six places. City Hall, City House Authority. County Hall, County House Authority. State Hall, State House Authority. And the key words you're going to say are rent assistance because of COVID. Rent or mortgage or utility assistance because of COVID. Three must, you must do. Number one, you must reach out to all six places. Number two, you must get multiple applications on file. Number three, you must get multiple rounds. So if you got a round early this year, get another round today. If you got around yesterday from one organization for a certain three months, go get it from another organization today for another three months. Again, this number was then is grown to 40,000. Utilities, utility assistance because of COVID. The keywords are rent assistance because of COVID, mortgage or utility assistance because of COVID. Here's Mark, his brother in law got $15,000, grew a lot. Snap, money for food. If you got a third stimulus check, you should be getting a Snap as well. Snap is incredible. You get it from the Department of Agriculture. They're open all next week. Re pick up the phone and get it. It's gone up a lot. 25,000, 25% average across the board starting in October. Mark's brother-in-law is getting $25,000 a year over 10 years. That is a quarter million dollars. Then you want to get the combo items. It started with Nisi and Art Sullivan. They got three. Now I've told viewers counselly to get those three items. Here is Mark. At 32, I said, Mark, where's your third? He got his third, brought him to 50,000. I said, go get more. He brought him to 100,000. Lorraine, she was at 105. Now she's at 120. So keep on getting multiple items across the board. Then what's important to understand is that you need to push and get those sums of money right now. If you've not become a member, consider becoming a member to get that incredible newsletter. Monday through Friday, the newsletter is under the video's link. The membership link is under the video's description. Consider becoming a member to get that incredible newsletter. It comes out Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that features the big money under first, second, and third stimulus for you to get. It features the six nonprofits. It features, excuse me, it features the six places to reach out to. It features the keywords to say. It features the five nonprofits not covered in this video. It features the one nonprofit that helps with home repairs. It also features the important statement from Treasury you want to read about before reaching out to get those incredible sums of money. And with that, let's now turn to that COLA raise. And I'm getting a lot of questions about this across the board with your impact on your SNAP as well. COLA is going in 5.9% raise starting at January 1. So January 1, everyone's benefits are going up 5.9%. What's important for you to know is that you don't have to do anything for this. This is automatic. If you didn't receive the IRS letter or the Social Security letter, don't worry. It's automatic. One, everyone's benefits are going up 5.9%. Two, it's automatic. Three, you don't need the letter. Number four, I don't, can't believe I'm actually saying this. You should be happy you're getting more money per month. <laughs> Why do I have to even say that? I have to say that because some people complaining. My snap is going down $20. Well, your benefits are going up 5.9%. What, what, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? Your benefits are going up 5.9%. Uh, and here's what's an issue. I didn't notice the, co the core was over there the whole video. Uh, let's go over. Your snap benefits went up 25% in October lifetime. Remember, 25% on average? Yeah. So they may go down 3%, 4%, 5% uh, because your COLA benefits have gone up. We have fought tooth and nail to get your benefits raised up on this channel over the last year. And this is the first time they're going to go up. And they're going to continue to go up because inflation is kicking in. This stimulus would be going to drafting in early January, potentially. And yeah, it could happen at the same time as forced stimulus. Sounds strange, it's not strange. The two bodies of legislation go at the same time. That would raise your benefits up one big time, get you caught up, then apply a new benchmark. The new benchmark would be inflation. And then remove the income cap, and remove the marriage cap, and remove the marriage penalty. But are you losing SNAP? You're not losing SNAP unless you barely qualified for it. That's for people who make a lot of, who make a certain amount of money that they were right on the edge of 
not qualifying for snap and barely slide slid in is your snap potentially going down potentially yes it's going down but not a lot it w again went up 25 percent lifetime but remember you want your benefits your cola benefits to go up and they will be going up excuse me you want your benefits ssi ssdi social security railroad benefits to go up and they're going to continue to go up year after year that is something you want again this is income this is income and it's a taxable event and with that, let me go into my big commentary in the final minutes of this video today. A very different video, as you see, a special report where I had to go over what's happening with Joe Manchin. Earlier this year, there was a time when this channel was the first to record anything about Forrest Stimulus. And then other people sort of came into the space and then wanted to run quotes. But Joe Manchin, but the Joe Manchin, and you know what they were. Those were very deeply GOP uh, publications or sites or broadcasters or channels that simply didn't want you to have the recon. And my messaging at the time was very simple. One, I'm not going to talk about Joe Manchin. Number two, uh, if I had to talk about Joe Manchin, I was going to say, well, in all previous recons, he's always said no down to the very moment in which he votes, and he votes yes. He did that with all this other stuff, like the, like the, social, like the, um, the death ceiling limit. He said no. The recon procedural, he said no. And then at the 11th hour, he always says yes. So I never covered him for a consistent reason. Uh, because he, he plays a bad poker game. He just he uh, he plays a bad poker game, and he um, he does his puffery. He uh, whatever you call it a a, a a false negative. He runs a false negative, and then ultimately when he votes, he votes yes. Today, very clear. I had to run a Joe Manchin video, so you understood the magnitude of it, and that the news is not bad for you. The news now signals that this is why. Hashtag Chuck call the vote. Take this video and, re and retweet it. Tag Chuck Schumer, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Ron Wyden, Ron Bo Bob Casey, um, Coons, and uh, and also Pramila, and say Chuck call the vote. Hashtag Chuck call the vote. Coming up next is Evening's Alley. And if you missed it, we have a new programming lineup on this channel. Evenings LA has now been revamped, and it has no less than a full slate of shows, starting with Evenings LA at 5 o'clock, brand new. Then, Evenings Countdown at 6 o'clock. Then, we have Holiday Stream Stimulus at 7, half about stimulus, half about holidays. At 8 o'clock is the brand new breakout hit of the holiday season. It's called Evenings Extra. The latest news about your recon, it appears opposite Calcino. So if you want humor, you can watch Calcino. If you want information, you can watch that show. And Evenings Extra has been a massive hit. Then we got shows all the way to the new morning. Meantime, watch for this channel to transform as you see a new series of shows coming on this channel that you have asked for, and they're coming on. And with that, I want you part of this incredible family. Like this video, two, 3,000 likes, and consider becoming a member. Stay here, because coming up next is Evenings LA at 5. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with Ally for more.